Hello Android developers, I'm back with another video about an interesting software development principle called dependency injection with some flavor of Android application development. Before I start, I'd like to thank you all for your support and kind feedback. Please keep supporting this channel by subscribing and sharing it with other Android developers. First, I'd like to mention the elephant in the room. Dependency injection is a complex topic, and mastering different frameworks like Hilt or Coin takes some time. So be patient and keep practicing to make it perfect. Let's start with a high-level overview of what dependency injection is and how it can be used in Android application development. In software development, dependency refers to a relationship between two software components where one component relies on the other to function properly. A software component can be a class, module, library, or any other pieces of code that provide some functionality to the application. For example, if you have a class that uses a database connection to retrieve data, the class has a dependency on the database connection. The database connection is a separate component that the class relies on to function properly. Managing dependencies is an important part of software development as it can impact the quality, maintainability, and scalability of the application. Too many dependencies or poorly managed dependencies can lead to code that is hard to understand, modify, and test. On the other hand, well-managed dependency can make the code more modular, flexible, and easier to maintain over the time. What is dependency injection? Dependency injection is a design pattern in which an object or function receives other objects or functions that it depends on. It aims to separate the concern of constructing objects and using them, leading to loosely coupled programs. In simple terms, it allows the creation of dependent objects outside of a class and provides those objects to a class in different ways. Using DI, we move the creation and binding of the dependent objects outside of the class that depends on them. This helps you to follow Solid's dependency inversion and single responsibility principles. At its core, dependency injection is a technique for managing dependencies between different components in an application. In the context of Android development, this means managing dependencies between activities, fragments, services, and other components that make up your app. Some of the most common used Android DI libraries are Dagger, Hilt, which is built on top of Dagger and aims to reduce the boilerplate code required for Dagger and make dependency injection less painful for Android apps, and Coin, which is written in pure Kotlin using functional resolution only with no proxy, no code generation, and no reflection. However, they have recently added annotations to this library. Dagger and Hilt are developed by Google and have a steeper learning curve but Coin is simpler to use and learn. Also, some of the less famous Android DI libraries are Toothpick and Codein. By using dependency injection, you can remove the responsibility of creating dependencies from individual component and instead delegate that responsibility to a separate framework or library. Dependency injection can improve the code quality in several ways. One of the most significant ways that DI can improve code quality is by reducing coupling between components. When components are tightly coupled, changes to one component can have a significant impact on other components, making the code more difficult to maintain and modify. By decoupling components through DI, each component can be tested and modified in isolation, making the code more modular and easier to maintain over time. DI can also promote testability by making it easier to isolate components and replace them with mock objects during testing. This makes it easier to write unit tests that validate the behavior of the individual components and identify issues early in the development process. 
DI can also enable greater flexibility and adaptability in the code by making it easier to swap out components and modifying the behavior of the application. This can be particularly useful in complex systems where requirements are likely to change over time. DI can also enhance code reusability by making it easier to use the same components in different parts of an application or different applications altogether. This can help to reduce development time and improve overall code quality by promoting consistency and standardization. Finally, DI can improve code maintainability by making it easier to identify and fix issues in the code. By making the code more modular and testable, it becomes easier to understand and modify which can lead to fewer bugs and a more reliable application. Let's talk about types of dependency injection. There are two main types of dependency injection in Android DI frameworks called constructor injection and field injection, and some other types including setter injection, method injection, and interface injection, which I will skip in the Android context. Constructor injection is the most common type of dependency injection. In this type of DI, Dependencies are injected via the constructor of a class, the class declares its dependencies as constructor parameters, and the DI framework provides these dependencies at runtime. Constructor injection ensures that all dependencies are available when the object is created, and the object is fully initialized before it is used. The other type is field injection. Field injection is the simplest type of dependency injection in which dependencies are injected directly into the public or private fields of a class. Next, I'd like to discuss best practices for using dependency injection in Android. By following these principles, you can ensure that your app's dependencies are managed effectively and efficiently. Avoid using service locator pattern. In short, service locator and dependency injection are just implementations of the dependency inversion principle of solid principles. Dependency injection and service locator are two different patterns that are used in software development to manage dependencies between components of an application. While both patterns aim to solve the same problem, there are significant differences between them. The key differences between dependency injection and service locator is how dependencies are resolved and managed. In DI, dependencies are injected into a class or component by an external entity, usually a framework or a container. This means that the class does not need to know how to create or manage its dependencies, as this responsibility is delegated to an external entity. The service locator pattern is a pattern where dependencies are resolved by a central registry or locator. The class that needs a dependency requests it from the service locator, which then returns an instance of the dependency. This means that the class needs to know how to retrieve its dependencies, which can lead to tight coupling and make the code less testable. While this pattern can be useful in some cases, it can also lead to code that is difficult to test and maintain. Avoid using singleton pattern. The singleton pattern is a pattern where a class is restricted to a single instance and provides a global point of access to that instance. While this pattern can be useful in some cases, it can also lead to the code that is difficult to test and maintain. Using dependency injection framework is a better approach than using the singleton pattern. With Hilt or Coin, you can define your dependency in a clear and modular way which makes it easier to test and maintain your code. Use constructor injection more. As I mentioned before, constructor injection is a pattern where dependencies are passed to a class through its constructor. This pattern is simple and effective way to manage dependencies in your app. By using constructor injection, 
you can ensure that all of the class's dependencies are provided at the time of construction. This can help you avoid issues with uninitialized dependencies and can make your code easier to test and maintain. Also, as I mentioned before, field injection is a pattern where dependencies are injected into the class's fields using annotations or delegations like inject. This type of DI is not recommended as it violates the principle of encapsulation and can make the code harder to maintain and test. In general, it's best to use constructor injection instead of field injection. However, there may be some cases where field injection is necessary, such as when injecting dependencies into framework components like activities and fragments. Use named annotations for multiple implementations. In some cases, you may have multiple implementations of the same interface. In these cases, it can be helpful to use named annotations to differentiate between the implementations. And as the last point, use scopes to manage object lifetime. Scopes are a way to manage the lifetime of objects in your app. By using scopes, you can ensure that objects are created and destroyed at the appropriate times. Dependency injection scopes are a powerful tool for managing the lifetime of objects in your app. By defining a scope for a particular object, you can control when that object is created and when it is destroyed. This can help to improve the performance of your app and reduce memory usage and memory leaks. That's all I wanted to share with you in this video and I hope you found some interesting points and feel free to share your questions or experiences using different DI libraries in your Android applications in the comment section of this video. Also, do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already and like and share this video with other Android enthusiasts. Bye.